The name of my book is The Gender of Photography, and there's a subtitle to it, but really what I was looking at is why so much of the canonical history leaves out early women photographers. So I started research and I found all kinds of women from California to Scotland. And so I wondered, why aren't they mentioned? You know, why don't they appear? This invisibility started in the 19th century. And so my book looks at how that was, why that happened, uh, how women succeeded in the field of photography anyway. There was a woman named Hannah Maynard, and she had what was probably, you know, the only successful photographic studio in the town that she lived in, in British Columbia. And she took photographs of everyone in the town. And she also took self-portraits, and her self-portraits had uh, multiple exposures in them. So you would see a portrait of Hannah Maynard where she is serving herself tea, drinking the tea, and is the subject of a picture on the wall. So she was doing innovative stuff. And then another lady who's becoming quite famous was the Countess of Castiglione who was an Italian woman, a countess by marriage, who moved to Paris, um, subsequently got a divorce from her husband and went on a journey with a French photographer making about 300 self-portraits from the 1850s to the 1890s, from when she was a young, beautiful woman at court going to balls and having an affair with the emperor to an old lady um, who was sort of depressed and decorated her apartment all in black. So she's another important one. One lesson that I learned from the women I discovered was that despite naysayers, despite all of the voices and the kind of unwelcoming atmosphere for women in public spaces like photographic societies, there were women who did it anyway. Uh, you know, so it kind of taught me, you know, if you really believe in something, just do it. You've got to just ignore naysayers and keep going and find your allies. The other lesson that I learned was that it's important for women to make sure that they insert themselves into the discourse that's going on, whether in the arts or the sciences or in, in the teaching profession or wherever. Otherwise, they'll be lost.